Georgian history. Also, he started to conceptualize a new Georgian national master narrative that turned our nation's past into a national history. He emphasized that while critically studying Georgian historical sources, he introduced modern scientific methods into the research of the Georgian people's centuries-long history. Even if a lot of new sources has been discovered and documented in the last two decades of the 19th century, they still require scientific analysis and evaluation according to historical methods. So he tried to uh, uh, introduce the standards that were in, in Western historiography. The historian, according to Javakishvili, needs to carefully select the already investigated segments of the non-investigated parts of the national past, as he put it. Therefore, his history of the Georgian nation, Kartvili Eris Historia, represents a scientific work in progress relying only on the already investigated sources and the state of the arts, which started in 1902 and continued until his death in 1940. In the end of his four-volume work, History of the Georgian Nation, he presents the first attempt for an all-encompassing scientific presentation of Georgia's history as a modern and comprehensive national master narrative. Historical thinking in all its different manifestations is characterized as constituted by the logic of narration. So very much what is, for example, Moonslows and others, Hayden White and uh, uh, Fred Anka Smith's uh, uh, approach. This logic is presented in a form of a paradigm which brings a specific rationality in treating the past as history to the fore. In 19th century Europe, history represented a crucial element with which to interpret remnants of the past as part of one's own nation and national identity. It provided the framework for a national culture, a narrative, a chronological sequence of events for the nation and its cultural heritage. But how, when, under which conditions and by whom was history used to create national identity and national culture? To answer this question, we will rely on Thomas S. Kuhn's seminal work, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. It's uh, quoted there. Um, he stated already in the 1960s that scientific progress depends on the explanatory paradigms applied on the object of studies and not on the accumulation of knowledge. The German historian Jörn Rüsen adapted this paradigm approach for the cultural studies, so this can be also adapted for other, for area studies, like Caucasian studies, for example, uh, especially historiography to investigate the relationship between narrative and non-narrative elements of historical sense generation. The paradigm, or as he put it, the disciplinary matrix, provides an explicit theoretical explanation of rules and regulated mechanisms for the cultural practice of interpretation. And this is what most of us are doing in the humanities and in the social sciences as well. So there are decisive factors identified interacting in a systemic relationship that reflect, that influence the way of knowledge generation and interpretation. In our case, the generation of historical sense is a process that is mainly regulated by the following five factors. And we can start on the uh, lower left side with interests. Interests can be put as the needs of orientation in private practical life provoked by the experience of time or historical change in the contemporary world. So orientation of a human being in a society in a certain time and ge geographical space. Second point or second factor is are the functions of cultural orientation. It means how the experience of the past is represented and interpreted in a certain chronological order of human acting or a certain form of 
concepts of historic identity. And everybody has a historic identity, perceives his own biography and so on. Third point are the aspects that are implicitly or explicitly direct us how to interpret our experience of the past as well as our memories. There we have, where we, there we are relying on theories, concepts, models, perspectives or categories. In classical historiography, I would say these uh, underlying approaches are implicit, so not exemplified. But for modern research, it is really recommended really that you are as explicit as possible in clarifying what are your theories you are relying on in designing a research project, for example. Fourthly, we have uh, methods of how the empirical evidence who is still present in, for historians, uh, the sources, cultural monuments, memories, archaeological ex excavations, or other kinds of data or remnants of the past, will be integrated into the aspects of interpretation of the past. So this is about constitu constituting the facts that are the bu building the evidence, the basis of our explanations. And finally, fifth, we have the forms of representation. So it means of how we present the historical experience that has been integrated into a certain interpretation. It means how to transform a past that is only available to us in certain remnants is transformed into history. So even if history is always written from the perspective of the historian, who he himself is always embedded in this kind of disciplinary matrix as a given context. So this is a question of how is the relationship between the researcher and the object of his research. Uh, classical historians do neglect this kind of relationship. They say the past what was it was, so Ranke, for example. The first two factors, interests and fact functions of orientation, do more relate to our practical life, so everyday life, while the latter three factors constitute the more theoretic discipline of history or historiography, so the academic part. They have certain rules that are outlined and where you have to adhere to, to get your research acknowledged by other colleagues or peers. But these factors interact with each other in a very complex way. They do not form a, hi a, a, a hierarchical or chronological sequence, but are conditioning each other. That's also why it is ordered in a circle, so not to have any kind of prioritization or precedence. But in this systemic interrelationship, Three dimensions can be identified that influence the generation of historical sense in our case. They are mentioned at the left uh, side. So the first one is the political strategy of collective memory between the interests and functions of historical orientation in our practical life. So they are in <coughs> this kind of uh, uh, everyday life and they are exposed to political interest. And I think living in Georgia now, this is quite obvious, for example, in the way how the past, the relationship with Russia is interpreted now. And there are serious changes ongoing in historiography concerning this relationship, just as an example. Secondly, we have a cognitive strategy of the generation of historical knowledge between the aspects of interpretation and the methods of the discip uh, historical discipline. So the cognitive strategy is located in the academic field, in the disciplinary field, and is very much uh, uh, rely, uh, relying on the, the dominant paradigm that is in a searching society or scientific community, the dominant one. This can change. There are seminal works, not only this one by Kuhn, but for example, uh, about Orientalism. Yeah, so and there is a, and if you carefully investigate why this book became that important, you can identify if if you contextualize can contextualize really the history of its uh, uh, development. And this is also what I'm trying to do with Kathleen Eris Historia.
Um, and the third one is the aesthetic strategy of the poetics and the rhetoric of historical representation between the disciplinary forms of representation and the functions of cultural orientation in everyday life. So this is somewhere bridging between the academic sphere of the discipline and the everyday life, so the need of the uh, uh, ordinary citizens really to for cultural orientation. The most famous book here is Hayden White's Meta History, just to name, uh, uh, name one. It is sufficiently differentiated to take the multidimensionality of historical sense generation into account and not highlighting just one factor before others. On the other hand, we need to know how to achieve the connectedness and coherence of those factors and dimensions. This kind of meta criterion is a principle of historical sense that is put by Jörn Riesen in the very center of this kind of matrix. So really, how do we make sense of the past? As an individual, as a member of a society, of a continent, and so on. Or also as a member of a professional group, and so on. Um, yeah, we will hold that the introduction of a Georgian national narrative went hand in hand with a growing professional and Europeanization since this kind of scientific history writing was introduced in Europe in the second half of the 18th century and powerfully underpinned European forms of modern nationalism in the 19th and 20th centuries. Transnational categories for example, of religion, class, and race, did not challenge the national narrative as far as they were successfully integrated in the new framework. Then, they achieved their most powerful appeal in conjunction with the national narratives. For our presentation, we will discuss mainly the prehistory of Javakishvili's history of the Georgian nation today, and its potential as a model-setting paradigmatic standard for a Georgian national historiography. Therefore, we will try to fill in this disciplinary matrix accordingly. And I would like to move on to interest and the needs of historical orientation in contemporary life, so the political strategies of the importance of a national culture. And therefore, I have to go back a little bit into the 19th century. In the early 1860s, a group of educated members of the former noble elite aimed not at a culturally based renovation of the former feudal noble identity known as Kartle Loba, a long national line. They were not willing to assim assimilate to the dominant imperial Russian culture and formed an informal group later known as the Terk Daliolevi, those who have drunk in the water of the river Terek. It was a kind of cultural boundary that was set up by these people uh, between Russian and Caucasian or uh, Georgian identity. After studying at the law faculty of St. Petersburg University, this Ted Daleulegli experienced an exclusion from careers in public service and an ignorant behavior by Russian officials 